Hello, everyone. Welcome to Google Partners Connect. Today, I'm excited to announce that we're having our first Connect focused on growing your business with YouTube and video advertising. My name's Scott Christopher, and I'm the Community Manager here on Google Partners. Before we begin, I want to remind everyone to use the hashtag, hashtag Partners Connect, to share your pictures and your reactions to our speakers today. OK, let's dive right into this. We have three great speakers lined up. Our first speaker is Susie Ryder, who is the Managing Director of Brand Solutions here at Google. And she's going to walk us through how video advertising is constantly changing. After Susie, we're going to hear from Jeff Rosick from the Google Brand Lab. And he's going to talk about how you can build your brand in this new digital age. And finally, we'll be joined by Mark McMaster, who is the Google product lead for YouTube and video advertising. And he's going to deep dive into how you can use YouTube to grow your own business. We caught up with Susie earlier this week in her office, where she says shared some of her thoughts uh, on the landscape of video advertising. Take it away, Susie. Hello, I'm Susie Ryder. I am the Managing Director for Brand Solutions, and I am here in San Bruno, California, which is YouTube's headquarters. And I will share with you today some of my thoughts about video and YouTube and content. Let's think for a minute about the 15 second, the 30 second, the 60 second spot, which has been the mainstay of brand marketing for decades. So I will share a very quick personal story. So 35 to 54 year old woman, that's me, in market for a car this December. I watched in its entirety the last season of Mad Men. I caught up on the last few episodes of Homeland and I watched from start to finish a scintillating but kind of like not so optimistic Showtime show called The Affair. Okay, lots of content. What we used to think of as the all important 15s, 30s, and 60 second spots, I didn't see one. Today, the 30 second spot and the 60 second spot do not carry the kind of weight that they carried in the 80s and the 90s. So if we think about that for a minute, in the 80s, number one show was The Cosby Show. And the Cosby Show in the 1980s earned a rating of about 25. So what that means is that 25% of the people in a target market age demo who tuned in to watch television tuned in to watch The Cosby Show. Ten years later, the number one show is Seinfeld. And 22% of the people who were tuning in to watch television watched Seinfeld. So you come forward another ten years to the number two show in the year 2014, The Big Bang Theory with a rating of six. So you can see how dramatically the ratings have shifted. It used to be 15 years ago, we would say you could reach 80% of any target market with three 60 second spots. Now, this is the very big picture why brands need to think like publishers and like content creators because the audience fragmentation is so extreme, you cannot reach the big mass markets that you used to be able to reach. So think a little bit about shows that you watch. It is a little surprising to people when they realize that the audience sizes of some of the shows, which are the most popular shows today, are the size that they are. So in my view, television has never been better. But when I say television, I literally just mean the shows. So Homeland, what do you think Homeland garners in terms of viewers of an episode? Season finale of Homeland. I won't spoil it for anybody who hasn't watched it, but season finale of Homeland. 1.9 million viewers. 1.9. Garnering a 0.6% share. Not even one percentage rating point. Okay, so that's Homeland. Mad Men, coincidentally, also 1.9. Garnering 0.9% share of the market. Pretty Little Liars. In its fifth season, one of the most popular shows for the youth female audience, garnering 1.7 million people, viewers per episode. So you can take a show like Pretty Little Liars with a youth female demo, and you can directly compare it to creators on YouTube, a young woman named Rosanna Pancino, who has a recipe for rainbow cupcakes. That single recipe has garnered over 29 million views. So you can do these kinds of comparisons in every single product category and compare a show to a YouTube creator, a YouTube show, and you will find astronomical view counts for some of these YouTube shows. So in the past, there have been tools that marketers have used that have been pretty tried and true. You've had new product innovation, pricing, distribution channels, advertising and promotion. You are adding to it a fifth tool, and that is content. 
One of the key concepts here to understand about YouTube and the YouTube platform is an innovative ad format that we launched actually five years ago this month. And the ad format is called TrueView. And it works very simply in that a commercial will roll. And if the person who sees the commercial on what we call the YouTube watch page, if they don't want to watch the ad, then you can see this little box comes up that says skip ad, or you can skip this ad in five seconds. They skip the ad, the advertiser, you, does not pay for the ad, and the user, the person, goes straight to the content. But this is an unbelievable way for you to promote your content as you start to think in the mindset of a publisher who is creating content and not commercials. So thank you. Have an absolutely wonderful Partner Connect, and uh, take care. Thank you, Susie. Next up, we have Jeff Rosick from the Google Brand Lab. In his role, he works with global brands to really build unique digital campaigns and experiences. He's going to walk us through how you can specifically build your own brand in this new digital age. I'm now going to pass it off to Jeff Rosick. Hi, everyone. I'm Jeff Rosick from Google's Brand Lab. And I want to give you three fundamentals for digital brand building for your business. What's different about marketing your business online is the consumer. It's much trickier to reach the consumer online, and even more so, to move them up what we call the consumer awareness and engagement arc. To move customers from low awareness, to knowing what your brand is and stands for, to caring about you, to purchasing, to becoming loyal customers. So as you think about this consumer arc, and how you're going to move your potential customers up and along this arc, I want to give you these three fundamentals. First, think digital first. Second, show, don't tell. And third, develop an always-on content strategy. And I'm going to illustrate these principles by using some brands that I've chosen for you. And I'll try to illustrate what's relevant to you about these brands and how you can apply what they're doing to your business. For the first principle, think digital first. What do we mean by that? We mean the digital consumer is just different. First of all, they're leaned in. They're participating in the content and the ads and the messages they're consuming in digital across many devices at many different touch points along their way to buying products and services. So you have to build marketing that allows for the fact that consumers are looking at a lot of messages at once, might even be expecting to be able to skip out of a message before they move on to the content they're trying to consume on their phone or tablet or even desktop. And lastly, really expect to engage with the story or messaging that they're seeing. One brand that's doing that really well is Warby Parker. Warby Parker is only five years old, based in New York, and has disrupted the optical industry by allowing consumers to choose, try on, and purchase eyewear all through their website. When they launched five years ago, this was a really disruptive idea. Consumers had tons of questions about the service, how they could use their home try-on program, how they would ever choose frames, would their insurance cover it, and all sorts of other things that you might imagine customers were wondering about before they bought glasses online. After five years and a lot of success, Warby Parker actually finds that they have to remind, remind potential customers one of their most important selling points. Their glasses start at only $95. So we're going to look at a recent video ad from Warby Parker and how it reiterates this value message at $95. $95? Grams, you shouldn't have. The world is my oyster. I mean, I could buy 1,609 temporary tattoos, or 78 cups of coffee, or 21 pounds of Swedish meatballs. So this spot's only 30 seconds, and that means it could air on cable or network television. And Warby Parker definitely uses traditional media in really smart and effective ways. But more importantly, the tone of this spot really tells you a lot about Warby Parker, the brand, and what their core customer is like. They have a personality. They make their purchasing decisions in a different way. They're what we call active managers. They quantify and measure what they're buying in their own daily lives. And this spot from Warby Parker, I believe, is really designed for that leaned-in type of digital consumer who makes purchases in that way. Warby Parker takes it a few steps further by constantly creating engaging digital experiences for their consumer. They created something in January called the Annual Report. If you're visiting their website and spend just a few minutes filling out some simple questions and answers about yourself, they'll give you some engaging content, such as nicknames that you can go by for the rest of 2015, and other quirky little tidbits that you can apply to your own personality. Just another way that Warby Parker tries to continuously engage their digital consumer. If you're looking for inspiration for thinking digital first, look at startups. 
Startups across many, many industries have gotten really good at the art of telling their story in a concise video that describes their company, what problem they're solving, how their products work, and how you buy it. So you can look at startups like Dollar Shave Club, Airbnb, Nest, and more for a little bit of inspiration about developing content for this digital first consumer. Our second fundamental is show, don't tell. This needs little explanation, so we're first gonna start with a spot from Talenti, an emerging gelato brand in the dairy category. Not only is this video much longer than 30 seconds and they'd have a hard time finding a TV slot for it, but more importantly, it takes its time to tell the story of what is different about this dairy product, how it's made, where the ingredients come from. It's almost a Wes Anderson film in the form of a digital video ad. And they can use digital video tools to promote this video and get it out there to potential customers in really smart and efficient ways. So they take their time to tell the story. They show what their product's about rather than being constrained to telling you what it's about. The homework assignment here is think about your business, your products or your services. What attribute would you most like potential customers to experience for themselves? And try to capture that in your digital marketing tools and messages. And that is the epitome of show, don't tell. Our final fundamental is to develop an always on content strategy. Why? Because your digital customers are always out there looking for new products and services. I'm gonna give you a framework called the HHH framework that can help you organize your content and your marketing materials for this always on strategy. HHH stands for help, hub, and hero. This can be a really useful way to organize what content you need in your digital marketing. Help content is very simple. It answers questions that the customer audience is asking. What products and services do you offer? How do we get in touch with your company? What are your customer services policies? Where can we find you? You don't need to be too creative in thinking about what help content you need. You should use Google Trends, tap into your store and sales associates and ask them what customers are asking there and as well as in customer service channels. And you can even use social listening tools to pick up on the conversation that is happening, not only about your business, but about what you sell and what you offer as a company. That's help content. I also wanna show you how a specific brand is using this framework to organize their own content strategy and that brand is Whole Foods a very large and beloved retailer, of course, but one that is trying to grow from about 400 stores to over 1,000 stores. They have a major challenge in amplifying the Whole Foods story to a much larger digital audience, and they've been organizing content using this HHH framework. For Whole Foods, help content looks like recipes, cooking techniques, and quick little answers about where their products come from. A great way to start with this content framework is to think about your customers and what questions they're most frequently asking and decide, do you need video content to answer these questions? In many cases you do because consumers are often increasingly looking for these answers in video channels. Next up, hub content. This is the most tricky type of content because it's the intersection of what your business stands for and what your customers actually care about. And of course, it's the second part that marketing people often forget to think about. What are customers looking for? How can you tell your business's story in a way that engages them that they'll actually care about? If it helps, write two circles on a board and list everything that you offer in one circle and everything that your customer actually cares about in another circle. The intersection is where you wanna tell hub stories. For your business, the first type of hub story might just be a really strong customer success story that is more about the customer and their outcome using your business rather than about your, your own products or services, which will of course be featured in that content anyway. For Whole Foods, their hub content is really about deeper stories of their organic and local sourcers, and even a series called Dark Rye, which really gets into their quirky and imaginative and creative and DIY type of customers. In fact, this Dark Rye series is actually gonna be on cable. And lastly, Hero. Hero isn't just about the content, but it's also about the moment in your annual marketing calendar when you need to make the biggest splash, when you need to move the most of your audience. Heroes might only come around a couple times a year. If you're a retailer, it's the Q4 season and key product launches or key sales events. If you're a movie, it's when you're launching your movie. Hero moments are different for every type of business. So think about what your couple hero moments are per year. And what you wanna do with a hero moment is to orchestrate all of your best ads, all of your best assets, all of your best messages, as well as all of your key advertising formats and tell the same story seamlessly across all digital and traditional touch points in a way that reaches and influences the broadest base of your customers at the same time. 
For Whole Foods, it was a campaign they ran across television, digital video, and even their social channels and their stores called Values Matter. And if you walked into a Whole Foods store during this Values Matter campaign, you'd see the same messaging, the same communications that you would see in their social channels and even in their video ads. This is an example of a clip that they ran across digital video and even on network television. So that's the HHH framework. And a great way to start with this content strategy is to begin applying it to your businesses. First, what type of help content do you need because customers are asking questions about what you have to offer? Second, what are the hub messages or the stories you can tell about your business or your products or services in a way that consumers will actually care about? And final, finally, what are the hero moments that you need to organize all of your marketing materials and assets to make the biggest impact in key moments for your business? And as we wrap up, I want to give you three more bonus fundamentals that are really important and really unique to digital. The first is to test and measure. Use video and other measurement tools like YouTube Analytics to know whether your marketing communications are working across digital channels. It's an untapped resource for many businesses of all sizes, but if you spend a little time with these measurement tools, it's gonna to help you spend your marketing budgets more efficiently and know that you're moving consumers and customers closer to your business. Second, listen and respond. One of the unique strengths of digital is that you have a chance to hear what your customers are saying and respond to them. Increasingly, businesses are using video to do just that. Warby Parker actually listens to what their customers are saying and asking across all channels and often responds with a video that is directed at specific customers like this one. should be starting on your glasses really soon. We're super excited. And uh, go birthday twins, January 5th. And last, leave no dead ends. One of the great luxuries in digital marketing is that there are so many different ways to put a call to action in your marketing messages. Whether it's overlaying cards on top of video ads to make sure that consumers can click through and visit your website or find more content, or just having a call to action in your marketing messages, make sure to leave no dead ends because oftentimes the digital customer is ready to take action or at least explore your company further right now. I hope you've enjoyed these fundamentals for digital brand building. There's a lot more to talk about and we're excited to help you on your way. Welcome back. We're now joined by Mark McMaster. Mark is the global product lead for YouTube and video advertising. We've heard a lot today about the video advertising uh, landscape as well as how you can build your own digital brand online. But now Mark's going to deep dive into how you can specifically grow your business using YouTube. Thank you for being here with us today, Mark. Yeah, thanks, Scott. And thanks to our Google partners for uh, letting me be part of your day to day. Um, so as Scott said, um, now we're going to get a little more tactical. And I'm going to talk about some ways that you can relate uh, YouTube and video as an advertising platform to your specific business. So we'll look at the audiences that are on YouTube, what kind of videos they're consuming. We'll start to think about what kind of marketing objectives uh, are best served with uh, video ads. And then finally, we'll look at measurement and how to make sure that you're getting the most value out of your video campaigns and optimizing to that. So first, let's think about the, the media landscape. And you know, Susie brought up some really interesting ideas about how the media landscape is changing and the ways that we consume content is much different now than it was even five years ago. So if you look at uh, this chart, we have uh, media consumption with the, the gray being time spent with TV each day and the yellow being uh, time spent with digital devices each day. And what you see is in between just 2010 and 2014, the amount of time spent with digital um, has radically increased. And you know, for the first time a few years ago, we had where time spent with digital actually surpassed time spent with TV. Um, so you might have some ideas about why this is out there. Um, two big trends that really matter. One is more time spent with mobile and digital devices like tablets. Um, and another one is video. If you look at this, uh, this yellow square here with uh, you know, showing about more than five hours spent with digital every day in the US, about 20% of that is video. So whether you're thinking about streaming content through something like Hulu or spending time on YouTube, the average US person is spending more than an hour a day with online video. So that's huge and I think that's why a lot of advertisers are expressing interest in YouTube as a way of building awareness and consideration for their products and services. Uh, because we have so much activity happening online around video, we see some really huge numbers in terms of user engagement when you look at our back end uh, on the YouTube platform. So about a billion unique users visit YouTube <clears throat> each and every month. 
More than 100 million people actively engage with the video content by sharing, commenting, or liking YouTube videos. And more than 100 hours of video are uploaded on YouTube every single minute, which is a really overwhelming you know, amount of con content out there. And honestly, these numbers are so big, it's hard for me to even you know, think of like context around that. So let me provide a few examples that maybe bring it a little closer to home. If you look at the, the demographic of males 18 to 34, typically one of the most difficult to target in terms of advertising, 45% um, of males 18 to 34 will visit YouTube today in the US. That's actually more than watch the Super Bowl when it airs. So I'm really massive media audience. Uh, and then five times as many consumers in the US will watch online video today as visit Walmart. So you know, when I used to work in product marketing, it was kind of the holy grail to get your product on the shelf at Walmart. Then you knew you had mass distribution. Amazing to think that one media platform like YouTube can actually deliver five times the visitors as all of the Walmarts in all of the US. So yeah, I think for all those reasons, we know that YouTube is massive. It has huge reach. Um, together with Google, it's about 94% of the U.S. population. So, you know, when I first started working with YouTube about seven years ago, I think there was kind of a myth that it was a very uh, specific demographic. It was young people. It was videos that were very entertainment type content that are a little superficial, um, not really a full-fledged media platform like TV. Really, times have changed just in the past five years with all of that increased video viewership, and we see all sorts of activities on YouTube. I think most important for marketers is some of these stats we see over here on the right, that 42% of online shoppers are using video as part of their research. So we'll talk a little bit more about that and what that really means. Um, and then 64% of people use YouTube to find products. Um, I'm not sure if you've heard this fact before, but YouTube's actually the number two search engine in the world uh, behind Google.com. And we see a lot of people who are going to YouTube to research all sorts of things, but you know, maybe most importantly for, for our purposes, they're going there to learn more about products and services. So that can be a really, uh, it can be a really good place to engage with customers, maybe before they hit search, you know, before they're going to google.com and typing in your brand name or your product category, but when they're just starting to learn about the category and think about what brands they might want to consider. So I mentioned that the content on YouTube is very diverse. So I wanted to show you a content map that kind of lets you get behind the scenes at YouTube and, and see what types of content people are viewing. So I took as a cut that, that difficult to find male 18 to 34 audience and I pulled what are the types of videos that they're watching on YouTube? So this is kind of a heat map of video content. The, the, uh, the size of these boxes is how much time that, that male young audience is spending with these types of content. And then the, the, uh, the green or red is the index. So bright green is things that young males are spending a disproportionately high amount of time on. Uh, red is, is things that they're indexing a little lower than the overall population. But if you look at the big categories, probably not too surprising. We see a ton of music over here on the left, a lot of TV and music, TV and movies being watched. Games is something that's incredibly po uh, popular with young males, not too surprising. But then you see like just a whole diverse amount of categories that uh, they're also spending time on. Sports, beauty and fitness, arts, computers and electronics, people in society, researching cars, uh, law, pets, you know, it really goes on and on. So what, what something like this tells me is that no matter how niche your business is or what type of product category you're in, you can probably find uh, not only content on YouTube that relates to that, but also viewers that have that affinity. And we have a lot of different ways of targeting that your agency partners can work with you on to make sure that you're finding both the right content and the right audience and reaching those with your advertising. So I think that's an important step when you're having the first discussions about how to advertise on YouTube is who is the audience I want to target, what is the content I want to target, and how do I best get at that using YouTube as a platform. So Susie really nailed this, this point earlier uh, this morning, which was changes in media make how we market different, right? You have to adopt, you know, you have to adapt to the platform in, able to, in order to have an effective marketing message. So, what worked you know, 20 years ago when we had primarily broadcast TV or lots of readership and print publications, you know, appointment viewing, I'm going to watch Seinfeld at 8 p.m. tonight, doesn't really work now when you have multiple screens, nearly infinite content, and people very accustomed to watching what they want to watch when they wanted to watch. 
Um, and, and that's a big part of how we designed advertising on YouTube. So Susie mentioned the TrueView platform, and I just want to reiterate kind of how that works and uh, how you actually buy it as an advertiser. Because we realized that with so many media impressions, so many ad impressions, so many billboards, TV ads, uh, you know, digital ads being presented to the consumer every day, unless we, sh we can know that there's actually real engagement, um, it may not actually be valuable to the marketer because he may not have the full, in full attention of the consumer. Meanwhile, we know that YouTube's very much a lean-in platform where people aren't just like sitting back and letting the, you know, seeing what's next on TV, but they're actually choosing the next video and being really active in selecting what type of content they want to watch. So with that in mind, we decided it was only right to charge advertisers when users are actively engaged on our TrueView ad format. So essentially, you upload your videos just as you normally would to YouTube, and then you choose what types of audiences and content you want to target, then you pay only when someone chooses to view your ad. And I'm sure we've all been on YouTube, we've seen the buttons that say skip video. That means you're being presented with a TrueView ad. And what we find is about one in five viewers choose to watch the ad. So four out of five skip, which you know at first might seem like, well, there's a lot of ads being skipped out there. But I think that's actually a really good sign for this as an advertising platform, because not everyone's going to be interested in your ad message. What you get is only the people who are truly engaged and actually want to see your ad and maybe learn a little more about your product and service. So the billing model works kind of similar to search, where you're only paying for the click. But in this case, the value is viewing the ad itself. So we're only charging you for the view, which is either watching 30 seconds of the video or watching it through to the end. So a few other benefits that we should talk about for this platform are um, maybe if you're using remarketing, can anyone raise their hand if they're uh, currently using remarketing lists? This is a nice way to, to get some people who are likewise raising their hand and uh, saying that they are interested in your product and service. So if you're doing remarketing off of people who visit your website, you might also think about after running uh, YouTube TrueView ads, uh, remarketing to people who showed interest by watching the video through. Now, the final benefit that I just wanted to mention here is that you get transparent reporting just like you get in uh, you know, most AdWords platforms. So you can see where your ads are running, what types of audiences they're hitting, and you can optimize in real time, uh, which can be a real benefit uh, if you want to get maximum efficiency out of your ad campaign. So I think we learned a little bit with that, just kind of how, how YouTube is similar but different than search. So an important question is, what types of marketing goals are best served by running ads on, on video and on YouTube? Um, and I think this is a really important discussion. We asked advertisers you know, who were trying YouTube for the first time, what brought you to YouTube? What's your interest in using this platform? <clears throat> and we found it was a really broad range of obje objectives, both including more, you know, more objectives usually associated with building a brand, as well as those associated with consideration and moving people down the funnel when they're already aware of a brand. So the two things that really stand out and I would recommend as some of the best reasons to use YouTube as an advertising platform are in red and blue here. At the top, build awareness of my product. If you have something that's new or you want to expose your brand to new, pe to new people, the storytelling ability, the sight, sound, and motion of video can be a really compelling way of doing that. You know, we also saw a few, few advertisers interested in driving subscriptions or comments. YouTube is a social platform, and some advertisers were looking for that element of it, but it didn't tend to be as popular as some of these uh, broader use cases. And then finally, uh, growing interest and demand. So let's say you, you have a, a customer that's aware of your product. We think they're in market. We want to show them a video that really drives home comparatively speaking, why your product or service is better than the competition and why they should choose you. That's another reason that people enjoyed YouTube and some of the targeting types that um, are, are available on YouTube to actually reach those in-market customers. Now, now at the bottom is something that I want to specifically address, which is directly driving conversions with YouTube. Because there are a lot of advertisers that are coming to YouTube having seen success on search and maybe the Google Display Network and some other areas where they've been able to really get a lot of performance and direct click results from their campaigns. And this can work for some advertisers on YouTube, but I would hesitate against using YouTube as a platform the same way you would use search 
or the Google Display Network. Because what we find is that people coming to YouTube are really there to engage with video content, and they're there to be entertained, educated, inspired by video. They're not necessarily in the mindset that they are in search, where they're looking to hop to the next site and uh, you know, complete their intent, whatever it is, to buy a product, to research a product. And for that reason, I think we have to look at YouTube as something that you know, maybe adds value more up the funnel. So you're influencing awareness and consideration that will lead later to search activity or visiting a website, but we're not expecting them to immediately stop what they're doing, stop watching the you know, incredible video that was sent to them by a friend, but instead wait for that activity to happen later. And we'll talk about that a little more when we consider measurement. So I wanted to highlight two examples of companies that I think are doing a really great job of building awareness and consideration with video. I think also highlight that you don't have to be a big budget advertiser to be really successful uh, within the YouTube ecosystem. So I won't actually show you these videos since we're live, but uh, maybe these are something you can review with, uh, with your agency partners or take a look at when you get home. The first one is Listen Headphones which is a really cool, kind of inspirational company. This was a husband and wife that wanted to get in the headphone business, but they were interested in making a difference and really uh, having some social change as well along with it. So what they did is it's kind of like a Tom's type model where they give away uh, you know, or they, they provide resources to help someone uh, gain hearing for the first time, someone who's hearing impaired and una unavailable or unable to afford that, that type of healthcare. Um, they give that away with every headphone purchase, and they could tell that story really compellingly, along with kind of the vision for their brand on YouTube. So have a look, see how they do that, how they introduce their brand on YouTube. It's really compelling. Then I think another really cool example, I'm not sure if you've seen the Glowy Zoe video, about 22 million people watched this. But this was essentially a, uh, uh, a couple parents that um, had created a really cool costume that was like a glow-in-the-dark stick costume for their kid. And then when she put it on, she was just unbearably cute. Um, and she dances around. And they weren't even thinking of this as like a business model when they put this video on YouTube. But the response was so strong, they thought, I should actually sell these online. They're easy to make. And uh, now they have a profitable online business um, all around this glowy Zoe concept. So have a look at that. It's cute. You'll enjoy it. But it also shows how this ad was just filmed with a mobile phone, but the content and the idea was so compelling, they're able to get 22 million views. So great way to launch a business. So I wanted to take a, a, time, a little while to pause and compare what YouTube is like versus some other media channels and maybe how to think about positioning YouTube as part of your overall media plan. Because I know a lot of us come to YouTube maybe from TV and we're kind of bringing some of the assumptions about TV to YouTube or maybe we're coming to YouTube from search and we want to think about like how we should use YouTube differently and kind of allocate different marketing objectives or different marketing resources for each. So very quickly, I'll just kind of compare and contrast YouTube to some of these media formats, starting here with TV. So obviously TV is incredible because it, it provides sight, sound, and motion. It can bring a brand to life and it, and it has really broad reach still to the, you know, to the population in the US or elsewhere. But it can be challenging because as TV fragments, like Susie was talking about, uh, it can be, get really expensive to both reach a wide audience or reach a, a, a sizable number of people in niche audiences. So the targeting is getting more difficult. It's getting more expensive to reach your audience. And you know, for those of us familiar with digital marketing, I think we, we sometimes are reluctant to really invest in TV because we don't know who's watching. We can't see those actual interactions and know who's there. Um, so I think YouTube solves some of these problems while still offering the benefits of TV. Um, the precise targeting often means you can reach your niche target at a lower cost or extend the reach of your campaign to people who are light viewers of, cam of TV. So those are some things you might want to talk about with your agency um, when, you're, when you're thinking through your media plan. And of course, you get the real-time reporting that those of us familiar with AdWords typically enjoy. So coming to YouTube from search, how do we want to think about YouTube differently? Um, Search obviously has really strong user intent. When people are searching on those keywords, you know they have deep interest in what they're looking for, which can be great for converting customers. Um, also very efficient for that same reason. But the challenge is, by the time people are searching, they may already have their mind made up about what types of products or services they're considering. So if you want to build market share for your brand, it's hard to use that as a way to build awareness and consideration and get your message out. 
Um, and so I think YouTube really complements search well, uh, especially for those upper funnel marketing activities, because you can, um, you can target for people who you know have an affinity for your product or service, but maybe they're not at the point where they're searching yet, so you can still influence them and really educate them about your brand. Then finally, I think a lot of marketers that I talk to, um, they know there's a lot happening with social, and they want to make sure that they have a good social strategy. So I would suggest that YouTube should be a part of any social strategy because we see so much sharing of video content on YouTube. Um, and it really is in itself a social platform where you can like, subscribe, and actively engage with content. So um, obviously, social has shareable, shareable content. You can do some really th cool things with targeting on social. Um, the challenges are, I think social isn't really where people go to watch video. So if you want to promote your video content, you, you might want to think about places where they'll be most receptive, and YouTube tends to be where they go to engage with video. And I think the final thing I would say when, when comparing YouTube to social is you want to make sure you're getting engagement with your videos out of it. So there are a lot of easy ways to get exposure to videos on social, but again, I think the TrueView platform is a really nice thing to think about, like what is the value you get there with actual engagement versus just broad exposure via social platform. So hopefully that was a good intro to how you might think of YouTube versus some of the other things in your media plan. Um, the, the other conversation I would have, just as you're thinking through your media plan and where you want to focus, is really to put yourself in the, in the mind of one of your, you know, your target audience members and think about the moments that matter through their day. Um, you know, because it's no longer, you know, you reach them through Seinfeld at 8 p.m., like I said earlier, but you have a, a broad array of different types of interactions that you can put your ads against. So, you know, for example, you might think about what are people reading on their tablets when they, when they wake up? What are they looking at? at the office when they're taking a break during work. On the go, you know, they can watch videos on their mobile phones. Uh, video can be a part of almost any of these types of interactions, so thinking about where and when you want to connect with your users and what types of moments matter there uh, can be a really important consideration as you're plotting out your video strategy as well as your overall media plan. So I just wanted to share a couple of case studies that I thought were inspiring, not just because it's great marketing, but it's also it's it's marketing from companies that you know, aren't Coca-Cola's with billion dollar media and creative budgets. So uh, one, one example I love to share on YouTube is a company called Whole Latte Love. Um, as you might guess, they are an online, online retailer of coffee equipment. Um, and they've been able to really build a community on YouTube around coffee lovers. Um, so they've leveraged all sorts of assets that you might not immediately think of as you know, good outlets for video, but actually are great, uh, great creative resources. So they hired a bunch of people who love coffee and love to talk about coffee, and then they created all of this video content. If you visit their channel on YouTube, you'll see all these videos. But it's things like reviews of, uh, of new coffee-making machines, um, tips and tricks about what goes into a latte, um, special promotions to keep people coming back to their, their store and engaging more. Um, but literally hundreds of videos, which were not difficult to produce. But by having all of these, you know, this always on content, as Jeff said, um, Whole Latte Love was able to create an active community of people who keep coming back and watching their videos. And because they created all of this organic interest and you know, fueled it by advertising the right videos that really worked with the audience, um, if, you, if you search on how to make a cappuccino, you'll see one of their videos is in the first page of the Google search results. So um, you know, I think that really shows how you can have wide impact just by serving a lot of needs that may be going unaddressed on a platform like YouTube that relate to your business. And finally, I want to share a, a, a case study from Visit California. Um, so this is the Travel and Tourism Bureau. And um, what they needed to have is really wide reach into a lot of different audiences around the world to drive interest in visiting California. Uh, and you might think, well, it's a big state, and they probably have a big budget. But it's also a nonprofit, so their budget's pretty tight. And what they were finding is reaching all of those different countries with TV was becoming too expensive. So they thought about YouTube as a tool to augment their TV spend and extend their reach to places they wouldn't otherwise be able to target with their you know, great video content showing beautiful imagery of you know, why to come to California. So they did this, and what was also cool is they were able to measure the results directly. So we ran a brand lift study, um, and we were able to see that for people who are exposed to their video ads, there's about a 17% increase in lift in terms of uh, intention to visit California, 21% increase in searching on California travel terms, 
and a 920% website visitation increase. So that many people who are exposed going to their website. So you know, m even more so than their TV campaigns, they were able to measure, quantify, uh, and reinvest in where this campaign was working. Which is a nice transition into the final thing I'll talk about, which is the types of metrics that you might want to think about when measuring your YouTube campaigns. So like AdWords and like a lot of other digital platforms, there's a whole range of different things you can measure on YouTube. But the important thing is narrowing it down to what's really the, the, the marketing objective and what's driving your business. So starting at the, the top, if you will, the top of the funnel, um, we, we see advertisers such as the US Marine Corps that are really just trying to get their reach out, make sure their message hits the right audience the right number of times. So if that's your goal, really um, impressions, watch time, likes, those are the right metrics to use. And they're able to um, take their TV budget and while still saving money, add in YouTube and get incremental reach of about 4.2%, 4.3% 4, um, of new audiences they weren't reaching before. And then you have uh, advertisers like Chevrolet really interested in extending their social reach. So Chevrolet um, was just aiming for those social metrics, shares, follow on views, subscriptions, um, and was able to get a huge net increase in subscribers who will be able to see future YouTube videos by you know, promoting their campaigns with TrueView just to get subscribers and really making that a clear call to action. So towards the bottom of the, the funnel, um, we have metrics like brand lift, which I mentioned with Visit California, search lift and site visits. So if you're really looking to drive consideration and make sure that after people see and are exposed to your message, that they're actually doing something afterwards and it's influencing their behavior, those are great things to track. As we get towards the bottom of the funnel, um, I think we again want to be cautious about not expecting people to click right off the YouTube ad and immediately do something. But with sophisticated attribution, um, as even one uh, local Honda dealer was able to do, they tracked the, uh, the impressions on YouTube back to people filling out sign-up forms on their website to get a, a, a visit to the dealership. And that was actually able to, you know, through their accounting, be tracked back to cars sold, Hondas sold at the dealership. So there are ways, you know, if you really think about your attribution, to track this back to actual sales and CPA, and that's something your agency can help you craft a strategy for. So hopefully that was a useful overview of you know, some of the audiences on, on YouTube, how to think about how YouTube relates to your marketing objectives, and then how to measure results. I'm sure this uh, prompted many questions, um, but I think that's why uh, it's great to have you here with your agency partners today so you can uh, use this as a start to the discussion on what the value of video could be to your business. So one resource I would recommend before I hand it back to Scott is uh, youtube.com slash ads. Some of the case studies that I uh, mentioned are um, in detail on this website. And there's also a lot of great resources on how to develop content and how to build out a strategy for the first time on YouTube. So check that out. Um, and uh, thanks again. Uh, I'll hand it back over to Scott to uh, close this out today. Thank you, Mark. Uh, I, as Mark mentioned, we are closing out the event, but before we close, I really want to remind everyone that we've heard from three great speakers, but the true experts are already in the room with you. They're your Google partners. They work with businesses like yours every single day to really grow them online. And video advertising is one of the tools that they have. So make sure you ask your partner what they can do for your business. And start to dive into the specifics of what that would look like and really craft a fun plan. Um, so I want to thank you on behalf of the Google Partners team for being here today and have a great rest of your week. Yes, moms. Uh, no, there are no breaks available. That's that's very insane. That's inhumane. Is that even legal? Oh, yeah. Walk with a bear. Now yeah, grow like a girl. Grow like a girl. Why can't run like a girl also mean win the race? You're really beautiful. I'm more confident. It's just a pet. It's only been a life-altering experience. This is going to be good. He's not going to know what's coming. Hey, stop! Oh, oh, oh. Welcome.
welcome to the household. Oh boy. Yeah, you're good. Oh boy. Yeah, you're good. Oh boy. Couldn't be done. Told me I should just quit. And now I'm here. You wanna play for real? Yeah. You risk everything. They told me it couldn't be done. Told me I should just quit. No second chance. But hold on a second. Now, technically, your device is on. Can you <laughs> tell? Oh, that's exciting! One day I was at work and I saw a video of a woman hearing for the very first time and it really was kind of a light bulb moment for me. I mean, it got me really thinking about how important music has been in my life and how I wouldn't be the same person without it. We wanted to start something that gave back, so we started a headphone company and called it Listen. For every pair of headphones sold, Listen helps provide hearing aids to a person in need through Starkey Hearing Foundation. YouTube was the inspiration for our business and it's also the way that we're growing our business. It's been there from the beginning and it's helped us experience exponential growth over the last year and a half or so. Your video ad is your elevator pitch. That's what tells your story. People can look at the pictures or read about it on your website, but once they see a video, they actually get the, you know, who's behind the brand, who's behind the business. 
Our video ad is launching in a bunch of different countries right now. With YouTube, we can actually see where our ad is being watched. So YouTube does a great job of breaking down different targeting groups so you can reach exactly who you're looking for. It's cool to see the percentages of views in every different country. This helps us when we're talking to potential retailers and distributors. It used to be that you had to be a professional videographer to tell a story. But now you can make a video ad in so many different ways. All it really has to be is real. If you're authentic and you have a real story, it'll resonate. People will see it. They feel, you know, connected to you in a different way. For Listen, it's by far the most important marketing tool that we have. Jewelry is my passion, and that is why I started Margaret Elizabeth. I started designing jewelry in college and actually held my first trunk show in my dorm room. In 2011, I turned my passion into my livelihood and later opened our first studio here in San Francisco. We have a wide range of designs from everything from black tie events to everyday wear, and our open studio is a comfortable place to come and discover them all. We love sharing our passion for jewelry and we're happy to help you find a piece that fits you perfectly. I invite you to check out our full collection online and follow our blog for the latest on Margaret Elizabeth. Our stud earrings are one of our most popular pieces because they're incredibly versatile. They work well with any ensemble and help to put the finishing touch on your look. One of my favorite things about the stud earring is that they come in a wide variety of stones, textures, and colors, making it so easy to add a pop of color to any outfit. At Margaret Elizabeth, we design everything in-house, so you know that your piece is going to be unique and timeless. Visit our website to check out our entire collection, and if you have any questions, feel free to stop by our San Francisco studio to chat with one of our stylists. Jewelry never shines as bright as it does in the summer, and at Margaret Elizabeth, we're helping you celebrate the season in style. This weekend, our entire collection is 20% off. We want to thank you guys for your support, and nothing says thank you like an exclusive sale. Browse all our newest designs on the website and use the code YouTube20 at checkout to activate the discount. 20% off is on from now until Sunday, so hop on over to MargaretElizabeth.com to find the perfect piece for you. I started Margaret Elizabeth because I love sharing my passion for jewelry. Today I'm going to share some tips on how you can stack our different bangles to create a unique look. Try mixing a few different stones and textures for a look that's really dynamic. One of my favorite combinations is a classic gold link bracelet mixed with a set of bangles. Try experimenting and see what works for you. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below or subscribe to our YouTube channel to catch all of our latest videos first. Thanks for watching and remember that the best look on you is the one that you love.